entrance and the communion antiphons this morning will be taken from the Labor Day readings. May your, may your favor, O oh Lord, be upon us, and may you give success to the work of our hands. Good morning. Special attention to today's Mass is for you, Barbara. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. It's a pleasure to begin this Labor Day with you. And as Rod mentioned, we'll use those antiphons, but also celebrate a Mass uh, for the sanctification of human labor. Brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are set to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through human labor never cease to perfect and govern the vast work of creation, listen to the supplications of your people, and grant that all men and women may find work that benefits their dignity joins them more closely to one another, and enables them to serve their neighbor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, it is widely reported that there is immorality among you, an immorality of a kind not found even among pagans, a man living with his father's wife. And you are inflated with pride. Should you not rather have been sorrowful? The one who did this deed should be expelled from your midst. I, for my part, although absent in body, but present in spirit, have already, as if present, pronounced judgment on the one who has committed this deed in the name of our Lord Jesus. When you have gathered together, and I am with you in spirit, with the power of the Lord Jesus, you are to deliver this man to Satan for the destruction of his flesh so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. Your boasting is not appropriate. Do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough, inasmuch that you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. The response to our song, lead me in your justice, Lord. For you, O oh God, delight not in wickedness. No evil man remains with you. The arrogant may not stand in your sight. You hate all evildoers. You destroy all who speak falsehood. The bloodthirsty and the deceitful, the law and the poor. But let all who take refuge in you be glad and exalt forever. Protect them, that you may be the joy of those who love your name. Amen. 
My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On a certain Sabbath, Jesus went into the synagogue and taught, and there was a man there whose right hand was withered. The scribes and the Pharisees watched him closely to see if he would cure on the Sabbath so that they might discover a reason to accuse him. But he realized their intentions and said to the man with the withered hand, come up and stand before us. And he rose and stood there. Then Jesus said to them, I ask you, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it? Look around at, looking around at them all, he said to him, stretch out your hand. He did so, and his hand was restored. But they became enraged and discussed together what they might do to Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. We see today in our first reading in our gospel the, the juxtaposition of two extremes of judgment, so to speak. In our first reading, St. Paul is calling out the grave sin of this man who is living with his father's wife, or his mother, or his stepmother, rather. St. Paul points out that this grievous sin is not even tolerated by the pagan Roman culture. But this Corinthian society is tolerating it and putting up with it. Certainly those in the community of Corinth failed to even maybe recognize, but certainly failed to call out this sin for what it was. So St. Paul steps up for the good of the community, even for the good of this man, and recognizes his sin. He says, though he doesn't do it on his own, he says he does it in the spirit of Christ. He does it with the authority of Jesus. After this community is met together, he says, they must take action to cast this man out, to deliver him to Satan. In fact, this is where the church kind of pulls its authority, the idea of excommunication, that only after all other means of persuasion have failed, all other means of reconciliation have failed, that extreme sanctions can be taken against someone. The hope that being dispelled from the community, they may come to their ways, realize the good that they're missing, and come to repentance to return to the community. It's good for the community as well to remove that serious sin so that it doesn't affect others in the community. Yes, St. Paul commanded to deliver this man to Satan, but ultimately, he says, so that his spirit may be saved on the day of the Lord. You see, salvation, uh, St. Paul had the, the goal of salvation of souls in mind when he was pronouncing his judgment. He was recognizing sin for what it was so that all may live one day in heaven. The scribes and the Pharisees, on the other hand, in today's gospel, they were watching Jesus on the Sabbath, watching him, waiting to accuse him. They were watching him out of pride, out of fear, out of their own selfish desire. They were trying to catch him, to hand him over. See the wisdom in this, that the church poses, juxtaposes these two readings, because we can all fall to one extreme or the other. We can fall into the extreme of not seeing sin for what it is, not judging and calling out sin in our own families, our own communities, even in our own lives, to shy away from calling out sin, taking decisive action to remove it, for the good of all involved. And sometimes we fall into the other extreme. Out of our own pride, our own selfishness, our own weaknesses, we look at the action of others and we seek to accuse them. So as we celebrate Mass today, we come in communion with our Lord and 
thanksgiving in this Eucharistic celebration. We are thankful that our God is a just God, but his justice is always tempered by mercy. We're reminded in our own judgment of sin of others to temper our justice with mercy, to be stern but gentle, to give the truth in love. For we are thankful that our God is love and mercy himself. Gather together as one body in Christ, we bring the following prayer, prayers and petitions for ourselves, our families, the church, and the world. For the Holy Father, may God continue to strengthen him and grant him wisdom as he guides the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Co leaders of nations, and those who make political and military decisions. May the Prince of Peace guide them in the way of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For those whose hearts are burdened by sin and who struggle to trust in God's mercy and forgiveness, let us pray to the Lord. For peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. For an increase in vocation to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent diaconate in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. For protection from storms, during this hurricane season, and through the intercession of Our Lady of Prom Succor, let us pray to the Lord. Let us now pause to add our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving and faithful God, we bring you these prayers prayers in the depths of our hearts, knowing and trusting that you hear and answer according to your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, you will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offerings presented here, nourish the human race with food and renew it with your sacrament. Pray, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world, 
that have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world and all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim you. Holy Lord, Several away with supper was ended. He took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of Jesus. Save us. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregor, our Bishop, Shireen, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs to eternal life, we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him, and in him, and God Almighty Father, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior, 
Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not at our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. communion antithon, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him.
Let us pray. Having been made partakers of this table of unity and charity, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that through the work you have given us to do, we may sustain our life on earth and trustingly build up your kingdom. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Saint Michael, we are here.